I am pleased to introduce our wonderful speaker today, Calissa Hall. Calissa is an exercise physiologist at both the Hospital for Special Surgeries Orthopedic Physical Therapy Center, as well as the Integrative Care Center. She graduated from the University of Illinois with a Bachelor of Science degree in kinesiology. She is a certified strength and conditioning specialist with the NC. NSCA and holds no, numerous certifications for specific needs and modalities in the fitness field, including the Aquatic Exercise Association, Precision Nutrition, and Functional Movement Screening. Calissa has been in the fitness and rehab field for 23 years and counting. She has worked in a variety of settings, including physical therapy clinics, personal training, and aquatic exercise. Calissa has a passion for helping people keep doing the things they need and love to do and strives to empower people to live their best life by working with them to integrate physical activity habits into their daily routines while focusing on functional movement, balance, strength, and endurance. She has an extensive background working with the older population and people with complex health issues. So I couldn't think of a better speaker today for our program. And with that, I will let Calissa take it away. Thank you so much. Thank you, Claudia. And thank you everybody for joining. Um, I appreciate you joining in for this webinar about high intensity interval training or HIT uh, for the older adult. Um, as I talk, uh, feel free to ask questions, um, everything. Uh, you, you don't wanna wait till the end. So feel free to put in those questions um, as they come up. Um, we do have some polls that we're going to post um, now so that we can um, just get an idea as to who, who you are, who you're, who's joining us and what your activity levels are and where you're coming from and see if we can address some of those things um, in, this, in this time that we're together. Uh, so the first one is what is your main form of exercise? You're going to choose one of those and if it's not on there click other and it's okay there's a bunch of different things you can do um, the second one is um, what is the biggest challenge to trying a new exercise and again that's something that is is very it could be very different for everybody so and then the last one is when exercising on your own do you use any tools or support to help you exercise so what do you find that works for you what do you have questions about so um, feel free to answer those in the um, answer them and then we'll, we'll go over those at the end as well um, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll target those as we as we go along okay I'm going to give you just a couple of seconds to process those I'm going to get into your talk here so Claudia how do I remove this screen from my screen oh wait here we go okay all righty okay all right, so we're going to go ahead and get started on the presentation. Again, feel free to chime in with those questions in the Q&A. Um, I have uh, nothing to disclose. So, so what is HIT? High intensity interval training is just like it sounds, a workout that alternates high intensity exercise intervals with recovery periods. So you're gonna have a work to rest ratio that you repeat for a set amount of cycles based on your abilities. The bottom line here is that you want to work, you want the work to be a high effort for a shorter amount of time, like little bursts of work followed by a rest. So HIIT training is highly modifiable and relative to the ability of each person, which makes it an appropriate workout for any age, which is great. The goal here is to alternate between high and low levels of effort at whatever activity level is suitable for you. So there are many ways to complete a HIIT workout and they can be done with minimal equipment or in any style of exercise you like. For example, if you like to bike, you can bike. If you, you can alternate 20 seconds of cycling at your maximum intensity and 90 seconds of cycling recovery, whatever it is that you like, that's what you start with. We wanna set ourselves up for success. So we wanna do the things that are appropriate and for you. As an exercise physiologist, I have a toolbox filled with different tools that represent different exercises strategies. HIT is just another method to choose from to target your fitness needs. HIT has been shown to be very effective in improving cardiovascular health. Compared to other forms of exercise, intervals improve heart health in a shorter amount of time. 
So again, HIT training is just another one of those tools that we can pull out of the toolbox and use to, to target your goals, whether your goals are to strengthen, uh, to build endurance, to improve balance, to improve posture. We're just gonna take HIT out, use it as a tool to target your goals. So alternating intervals can improve the maximum volume of oxygen the body can use, also known as the VO2 max. The better your VO2 max is, the better your heart can pump blood and the longer it takes to get to the, to, for you to get out of breath. And these are important protective factors against heart disease. We want to be able to take good breaths and deliver that oxygen to the muscles so that they can move. And that's why the VO2 max is so important. So it is important to not overstate the benefits of any one form of exercise. However, like most other exercises, HIIT workouts may contribute to the increase in muscle size and definition. We can improve in cardiovascular health with HIIT. You can improve your cholesterol, lower blood sugar, improve your insulin resistance, boost your metabolism, boost aerobic capacity or your ability to um, to do a long duration exercise. So taking a long walk or a long hike that requires aerobic capacity can lower your blood pressure, can help with weight loss, and it can improve cognition. So what does the research say? We are an education hospital, so we really believe in peer reviewed journals and, and what, what's being proven out there. Um, so I wanted to provide you all with a resource with information about HIT training, just in case you wanted to dive deeper into the subject after today's webinar. This particular reference is a review. It's called the High Intensity Interval Training in Older Adults. It's a scoping review. So the purpose, purpose of this scoping review was to characterize HIT research that has been done in older adults specifically, including the protocols, feasibility, and safety and to identify gaps in the current knowledge, you know, what's missing, what's not being studied. Uh, this review of 69 different studies was to identify the current research on HIT and the older population. Um, the reviews on what is known about in the literature about HIT training in older adults, including the, the, um, the protocol, excuse me, outcomes, feasibility and safety. And then the studies reviewed um, involved in HIT and cardiac function, HIT and metabolic function, HIT and neurocognitive decline, and HIT and osteoarthritis. So they're looking at a lot of different things for the older population. As the global population ages, we have early research on the impact of HIT in older adults suggests that it is generally well tolerated, feasible, and may confer with many health advantages for the population. But the studies are still few in number. Um, they represent small sample sizes and do not quite represent the vast number of chronic diseases that can affect this population. So thus more research needs to be done in order to support exercise prescription and recommendations for the aging population. Okay, so you're asking yourself now, is HIT safe for me? Just remember the most important thing you're gonna to learn today is to always consult with your doctor when starting a new exercise program, including HIT. Most important, you just gotta make sure you check in and make sure that's the right start. So when deciding if HIT is the right program for you, there are some important considerations involving safety, frequency, and proper form. For safety, pick a style of exercise that is safe for you based on age and physical limitations. For example, older adults may want to choose low impact exercises or to prevent injury. And if you're at a risk for falling, a stationary bike is probably a better choice than a treadmill. With regard to frequency, HIIT workouts should be done for a maximum of three times per week. You want to avoid muscle fatigue and overuse injuries. HIIT should also not be done on consecutive days. That way you are allowing your body some time to rest in between. Um, you wanna make sure that you're having plenty of recovery time in between. And as with all exercise, variety is best. And then finally, ensure that you maintain good form and body alignment throughout the workout to avoid injury. If you're unsure of where to start, schedule a session with an exercise physiologist or a trainer and just seek guidance on where you, what, what you're doing, what's best for you, what your limitations are, and you'll know where to start. 
All right, so understanding intensity. While the high intensity interval should feel challenging, it is important to start slow. So when starting, consider intensity on a 10 point scale, which I have here for you, with zero is no effort and max effort is a 10. And then start by alternating periods of high intensity at a three, and then your low intensity at a two. So you'll see you're still in that green zone there. So you're still starting off easy, but you wanna be, your high intensity should be, take you a little out of your comfort zone. You should not be in pain and you should not be struggling to breathe, but it's definitely, you wanna be challenged. So as you continue your HIT journey, you can gradually exert more effort during the high intensity interval. It is important that the high intensity intervals feel challenging and uncomfortable, but are not dangerous to your health. If you're not ready to progress the intensity, another way to progress is to decrease the amount of time spent for the rest interval. So you can keep the same amount of work interval, just take a little less rest and you won't uh, need as much recovery. With that in mind, still allow yourself plenty of time to recover before the next high interval. Okay. So this is just a little example to show, um, to kind of highlight that understanding intensity. Uh, this is a beginner walking routine. Um, you would start at an intensity of one from the scale with an easy walking warm up, And then you're gonna walk a little bit faster or uphill to increase the intensity to a three. You should be breathing heavily, but still able to maintain a conversation. Stay here for one to two minutes. You're gonna ease into the recovery period at an intensity of two. So you've gone now from three to two. You're gonna stay there for two to three minutes based on what you, you need for rest. And then you're gonna continue alternating between high and low intensity periods for 30 minutes. So you're staying in your comfortable higher zone and your comfortable lower zone for 30 minutes and you've completed your HIIT workout. Okay, so let's put this all together and consider these important points when getting started. HIT can be done anywhere, at a gym, in your home, at a park outside, anywhere. Be sure to evaluate your space for any safety concerns and set yourself up for success from the beginning. Plan your workout before you begin. You can follow along with a written workout or a video. This will help make your workout more efficient. Always warm up before starting the intervals. You want to warm your body up, stretch a little bit, just walk around, just, you know, just warm those muscles up if you've just, you know, started moving. Pick a familiar exercise to start with, whether that is walking, cycling, using weights and bands, or just body weight exercises and no equipment. You want to use an interval timer to keep track of your time. You want to start slow, and as your body gets used to hits, you can increase the intensity. And as with any other exercise, I always throw this in make sure you stay hydrated. Be sure to have that water nearby and stay hydrated throughout the whole workout. All right, so let's take you through a couple of just basic templates for what HIT training can look like. For um, an example of a cycling HIIT workout, this can be done on an upright stationary bike, a recumbent bike, or an outdoor bike, whatever you have. You're going to have, after a good warm up, begin with a work interval of 30 seconds consisting of cycling at a maximum intensity. Remember, the intensity is based on your own fitness abilities. This makes the, and then you begin the recovery interval of 90 seconds of light cycling at a lower intensity. So combined, this makes the exercise round two minutes total. Uh, repeat the exercise round of the work interval followed by the recovery interval for four to six times. This results in a 12 minute cycling hit workout if you complete this interval six times. So this is a great workout, doesn't take a whole lot of time and it can be progressed to more time as you increase your endurance. Let's look at swimming. Swimming is a great low impact exercise um, if you happen to have access to a pool. Um, after a good warm up, you'll begin with that work interval of one lap of a sprint swim with maximum effort. And that can be any stroke, backstroke, freestyle, whatever you, you prefer. Remember the intensity is based on your own fitness abilities. Then begin the recovery interval of one lap of a slow swim at a lower intensity. And then again, this makes the exercise round two laps total. So if you're repeating this six times, you're looking at 12 laps total for your HIIT swimming workout, which 
is fabulous. All right, let's go back to walking. This is beyond, uh, we're looking at a little bit more in depth than our uh, beginner walking. Um, you can do uh, any walking outside on a treadmill, whatever's best for you. Um, you're gonna, after a good warm up, you're gonna start with a work interval of 90 seconds consisting of fast walking or incline at a speed that fits your fitness level for maximum intensity. Remember, we're looking at that scale of, of exertion levels. Remember the intensity is based on your own fitness abilities. Then you're gonna begin that recovery interval for 30 seconds of slower walking at a lower intensity. This makes the exercise round two minutes total. You're gonna repeat that exercise round of the work and the recovery for four to six times. This again results in a 12 minute walking hit training workout if you complete all six rounds. Okay, we're looking at the running. So it, it, this too can be done outside or running on a treadmill, whatever's best. It can be jogging, it can be marching really fast in place, whatever that means to you. After a good warm up, you're going to begin with a work interval of 90 seconds of consistent sprinting or incline at a speed that fits your fitness level. Remember, the intensity is based on your level. Then begin the recovery interval of 30 seconds of walking at lower intensity. So this makes, again, we have a two minute round. And if you complete it six times, you're going to have a 12 minute running hit workout. This one here, we're talking about body weight, no equipment needed here. So you can do a lot of things uh, with your body weight and it's functional. We walk around with our body weight all day long. So this is a perfect choice for people who are just not really sure about the other, um, other modalities. So after a good warm up, I want you to, you're gonna complete the following exercises for 20 seconds each with a 10 second rest in between. So I have two sets of examples here. I'm gonna, the highlighted ones are the ones I'm gonna um, speak to now. So you're gonna do 20 seconds of that elevated modified push-up, which is that picture right there with the guy on the bench. You're gonna do that for 20 seconds and then you're gonna rest for 10 seconds. And then the next one is sit to stands to a chair. You're gonna sit down in a chair and stand up 20 seconds and then you rest for 10 seconds. The next one would be a split squat. The split squat is like this picture in the corner here. Um, uh, you do that for 20 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds. And then for the fourth one, marching with no weight overhead press. So you'll march in place with your arms going up with no weight needed. You do 20 seconds of that one and then a 10 second rest. Um, after that, you've completed two minutes total and then you complete that whole thing over again, four to six times. And again, if you do it six times, you've done a 12 minute, no equipment hit workout with six rounds. So all of these are excellent options for hit training. And you can see how you can really modify everything to adapt to what your needs are and what you like to do. We want you to have fun. We want you to doing the exercises that you enjoy doing. Okay. Um, so I believe we're ready for Catherine to join us. Catherine is um, going to uh, demonstrate a few things for us. You can actually see a HIT program in action. And then I think this will help kind of guide some of your questions even at the end so we can kind of get into that conversation. So um, welcome at thank you for joining us. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. All right. So what I'm going to do for those of you at home that are watching, um, you, you'll see on your screen, I have a list of exercises and I've grouped these into a beginner, intermediate and advanced. And what I'm going to do is have her um, demonstrate some of these beginner exercises. Um, and I've highlighted, I've asked starred the ones that I'm going to have her show. So we're going to do a 20 second um, interval, working interval, and then a 10 second rest interval. We're gonna do these four exercises and we're gonna repeat it for two rounds. We're not gonna go through the whole six rounds. And then we're gonna move on to the ones that are starred in the intermediate group. Cause you can see how a beginner exercise, once you get used to something, how you can modify it a little bit to make it more challenging as you progress through these, these programs, okay? All righty, are we ready? Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to stand up for me 
and you're gonna stand with your feet hip width apart. I'm gonna describe the exercise first and then I'll have you start and then I'll start the timer. And then I'm gonna tell you when to stop. I'll have you rest and I'll talk to you during the rest on the next exercise coming up. So you'll know what to do, okay? All right, so our first exercise, you're gonna march in place. You're gonna be standing nice and tall. Your belly button is in, lifting your chest and you're just marching in place. This is a great exercise to just warm up those hips, moving the legs, engaging your core, working on posture. You can make it a little more challenging by lifting up those knees. You wanna make sure that you don't go too fast. So you wanna be slow and controlled, kind of not letting momentum flop those legs down. You're doing great. Remember you want, okay, so that's 20 seconds. I'm gonna have you pause and take a 10 second rest. We're gonna to move to the next exercise, which is gonna be the row on the band in the doorway. So you're gonna grab that red band and you're gonna go ahead and start your rows right now, pulling back and squeezing your shoulder blades. Stay nice and tall, opening up the chest, squeezing the shoulder blades. You always wanna make sure you're breathing, deep breaths in through the nose, out through your mouth. Got another five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. Take that 10 second rest. You're gonna move over to this chair and you're gonna stand right in front of the chair for the next one. You've got three seconds. We're gonna do a sit to stand. You're gonna sit down in that chair and as you sit down, your arms go forward. And as you stand up, your arms come down. So we're just working on a functional body weight exercise here. We're moving the hips back towards that chair, engaging her core, working on posture. And hopefully she's getting a little bit of a, a breathless response here. Got five more seconds, four, three, two, one and rest, good. Take that 10 second rest, grab a drink of water if you need it. And the next one is going to be biceps with the weights. So you're gonna grab those two weights and we're gonna hold our elbows at our side and you're gonna curl those arms up one at a time, good. We want a full range of motion, so let your arm return all the way down and all the way up. And again, holding the belly button in, lifting the chest, breathing, Another five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, so we have 10 seconds and we're gonna start those four over again. So place those weights down on the floor. And we're gonna start back in the middle with your marching. So go ahead and move into position and march away. Perfect. Okay, 20 seconds. So you can see she's, she's minimizing her rest and maximizing her work here. Great job, great form, belly button is in, lifting her chest, posture is great. Remember you wanna stay tall, don't slump your shoulders forward. Three seconds, two and one, 10 second rest. And we're gonna move over to the bands on the doorway. You're gonna grab your red handles, have them ready to go. And we're gonna row starting now, pulling back, squeezing those shoulder blades. Good, inhale on the work, exhale on the rest. Keep those arms moving, full range of motion. Five, four, three, two, one, and rest. Okay, and we're moving right along. We're getting back in front of your chair. Take another three seconds and we're gonna go into those sit to stands and begin sitting back onto your heels, bringing those arms down, standing tall, good. Excellent, again, very functional movement. We sit and stand all day long. So this is a perfect choice to start with for beginners. Three, two, one, and rest. Take advantage of that 10 seconds and we're gonna move on to the weights on the bicep curl again, rounding out this second round. And we are ready in three, two, one, and bicep curl alternating, there you go. Perfect. Excellent. 
excellent. Got good form, working the arms in weight bearing. You can do this seated too, if necessary. Three more seconds, two, one, and rest. Okay, so that's the end of round two. So as you can see, you're just moving from whatever exercises you've listed ahead of time, and you're just moving from one to the next. It's the same structure, 20 seconds of work. If 20 seconds of work is not enough, then do 30 seconds of work. This is all about you and what your body is capable of. That's the most important thing. How are you feeling? Good, okay, we got a thumbs up, good, <laughs> okay. All right, so we're gonna give her a little bit of a breather and then we're, as we're gonna go through to this intermediate list. So we're basically just um, increasing the intensity of the, the beginner move. So she's going to start with a jog in place. We're gonna have her jog in place for 20 seconds and you can start now. So jogging in place is a little bit more impactful. So it's different than the marching. So you certainly don't wanna do this if your joints are gonna get achy or if it's painful. So again, your own physical needs, you have three seconds, two and one, and take that 10 second rest. The next one we're gonna do, you're gonna grab one dumbbell and we're gonna do a bent over row. So you're gonna place one hand on the chair your right leg is back and your right arm is pulling up towards the ceiling in a rowing position. So you're still targeting that scapular upper back region, squeezing that shoulder blade, relax the shoulder. Don't let the shoulder shrug up by your ears. Your posture looks great. Hold that belly button in. Another five seconds, four, three, two, one and relax, switch arms. We're gonna do that left arm too. So we're gonna do 20 seconds on each arm, perfect. Left leg goes back and your belly is flat, belly, is, belly button's in, back is flat and row, sorry. <laughs> Good. Can also use your kitchen counter for this exercise. If a chair is too much of a bend over for you, if you have back problems. You've got five seconds, you're doing great. Three, two, one, and rest. Okay, take that 10 second rest. We're gonna move on to the squat, which is a progression of that sit to stand. So we're gonna do a squat without the chair. So she's now gonna sit back onto her hips and sit into a squat pattern and drive up through those heels and squeeze her tushy up on the way up. She's opening up her chest at the end, standing nice and tall and moving at a comfortable pace for her. She's got five seconds to go. Four, three, two, one, and rest. Back to that 10 second rest. And we're gonna move into the scaption. So we're gonna grab those weights again, both of them, one weight in each hand. You're gonna stand with your feet hip width apart, your arms at your side, and you're gonna raise your arms up in the shape of a V. So your arms are straight, you're gonna come straight out to the side and then back down to your legs. So your arms will start down at your side. So go ahead and drop your hands down by your legs, all the way down, there we go. And then when you raise them up, you're raising them up with a straight arm in the shape of a V. Go ahead, whenever you're ready, perfect. And so we don't wanna go any higher than shoulder levels. So that way the neck muscles don't get too engaged. Good. This is a single joint exercise. She's working in a, uh, only one joint on this exercise. If you have shoulder problems, you might wanna stick with the bicep curls. You've got three seconds, two, one, and rest. Good, okay, 10 second rest. And then we're gonna start those four exercises over again. So you can set those weights down and we're gonna start with your jogging in place in three, two, one, and jog. Okay, picking those feet up, nice and tall, opening that chest. Her belly button is drawn in to support her low back. Drawing that belly button in engages those core muscles in the front side of your body. So it helps support your low back, which is very important. Another five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. You've got 10 second rest. We're gonna grab one weight and do those bent over rows again. 
place your right uh, left hand on the chair, right leg is back, and you're pulling back with that right arm, squeezing that shoulder blade. You've got good alignment of the spine here, lowering and raising the arm. Perfect, 20 seconds. And again, remember 20 seconds, if that's not enough, you can always go longer or shorter. If that's too much, you can do five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever works best for you and your body. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and switch arms. Great, now we've got that weight in the left, left leg is back, perfect, rowing. The row and any version of a row is such a great exercise for posture for those upper back muscles. Very important to, to target the muscles between the shoulder blades. It helps open our chest up for good posture. You got four seconds, three, two, one, and rest. Perfect. Take that 10 second rest. We're almost through it. The next one is going to be your squats again. So you're going to stand with your feet hip width apart, stand nice and tall. And in three, two, one, and sit back. So you notice her hips are sitting back, just like that chair was still there. She's not letting her knees go too far forward. She's using her glutes, those posterior muscles in the backside of her body to help drive this functional movement. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. Good, we got a 10 second rest. And then we're moving to those dumbbells with the big scaps and the big V with arms in straight motion. So start with your arms down in three, two, one, raise your arms straight up and no higher than shoulder level and then back down, perfect. So I've, I've modified these as I do a lower body and then I do an upper body. That's a good way to kind of get a little bit more rest for your legs while you're working your arms. So that's kind of why I chose this strategy. You can do that or you can do all upper body if you have shoulder problems, whatever works. Five seconds, four, three, two, one, and rest. And you're done, Catherine. I hope you are breathing nicely and getting that heart rate up and I hope you feel okay and, and Thank you so much for demonstrating this. I really appreciate it. This was great. Again, just shows the possibilities of um, beginner exercises versus intermediate. I wanted to give you um, some just equipment ideas. Uh, you know, sometimes we we don't really know the kinds of things we have at home that are really helpful for HIIT training or any other kind of training. Um, I included a laptop because, you know, times have certainly changed and there are many great virtual classes like we talked about before and guided workouts. A quick virtual exercise class can be a wonderful option um, for getting in a quick workout when you would have otherwise not had the time. Some other recommendations for low cost equipment um, are different types of resistance bands, a mat if you get on the floor, um, or if you're able to get on up and down off the floor. Um, dumbbells are useful for the upper body strengthening as you saw, but you can also use household items like um, jugs of water or cans of soup if you don't have weights. Um, other household items that are helpful are books and chairs. Um, but frankly, we can make exercise work with no equipment at all. Body weight exercises can be done with nothing at all and are very functional. So let the fun begin. I hope you have been able to begin to strategize what a HIIT workout could look like for each of you. Everyone's workout is gonna look different and that's okay. You want to work out at your own fitness level and, be, and ability. And remember to always consult with your doctor before deciding if HIIT training is appropriate for you. And if you need more guidance, contact the performance team at HSS. It consists of exercise physiologists who are here to help tailor a program that works for you or contact your trainer or somebody at the Y or, or whatever your resources are. 